Learn the horrible truth at the heart of the anti-life equation that is now ravaging the universe as we know it. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of DC's War of the Undead Gods issue number three and find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, we are once again not on Earth, but instead out in space. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but apparently there's a war raging between the hot people of Thanagar and the scientist race of Ran. Yeah, I know, a ran thanagarian war. It must be Wednesday already. The Ranians are holding out against the superior military might of the Thanagarians, thanks to their ace in the hole, a hero from Earth, a man named Adam Strange, who of course has been touched by Zeta Beams. What that means is every so often, usually at very inopportune times, poor Adam Strange must leave his planet and his people behind as he ends up phasing from one part of the universe to another. In this newest Zeta Beam quantum leap, though, Adam ends up having his absolute worst luck yet as he finds himself phased all the way to Earth a month before the anti-life equation cure was created. This means that he has no friggin' clue what's going on and poor Adam ends up getting ambushed by a zombified Wonder Woman who bites him. Oh, Adam didn't die there though, he made it home like he swore to his wife and child, the only problem is he ended up spreading the infection to his own people as well as the rampaging Thanagarians, who in turn very literally took the anti-life plague airborne as they spread it to neighboring worlds. Get it? Airborne because they're a hawk people. People, they're birds and they fly. I thought it was very funny. Things have gotten so bad, actually, the top brass of galactic politics have been going around looking to see if they can't hire some sort of hero to deal with this problem. Unfortunately, they find no hero brave enough or stupid enough to deal with the zombie threat. Instead, they find the mean man, Lobo, who, as we soon discover, Lobo's comedically powerful healing factor is so amazing, he gets scratched by one of the zombie hawk people and doesn't change. Yeah, how about that? That Lobo of all people is immune to the anti-life plague. The new gods weren't immune, Superman wasn't immune. But somehow the last Zarnian is, I guess being a character whose badass edginess is often played for laughs has a lot to offer on the back end, am I right? Now back on the Themyscira, we see that the Amazons and Queen Hippolyta are finally having the long overdue funeral for their fallen sister Wonder Woman. It's actually a very touching affair with all of her closest friends and allies showing up. And you know it's a Tom Taylor story because Green Arrow is there too to assist in giving Wonder Woman a Viking funeral. Yes, you heard me right, and Amazon had a Viking funeral. For all we know, the Vikings got it from them. This somber occasion though ends up getting interrupted by a party crasher, none other than Ares himself, the god of war, who even himself is taken a little aback by Wonder Woman's death, saying that the world lost a great warrior. Hippolyta says that many gods were invited to the funeral, but Ares wasn't one of them. Why exactly is the God of War right here right now? Well, he has tidings of terrible doom. He says the last great war will soon be upon them. As the heroes are quick to say, hey, didn't we just finish a war? Only for Ares to say, no, that was no war. That was merely a scuffle, a kerfuffle. A ballyhoo, if you will. The next war will be the final war. And he knows this because he's seen it all happen once before in worlds and times long past. It's at that moment, too, all the Green Lanterns get recalled from wherever they are in the universe to go and protect Oa from the oncoming zombie threat. But what exactly is so bad about all of this? Earth defeated the anti-life plague once. Surely they can do it again, right? But as Ares goes on to explain, Darkseid never truly understood what he did when he joined himself with anti-life. For you see, he is a new god, a mere child in the cosmic pecking order. The true heart of anti-life has always been one thing, one name, Erebus, which is a DC spelling of the actual Greek primordial deity Erebus, the son of chaos, in case you were wondering. According to Ares, Erebus had actually ended the world once before with an undead army, much like the one they're seeing now take over the entire universe. And it's all written right here in this creepy zombie book that is totally not the Necronomicon, but it really looks like the Necronomicon to me as the comic comes to a close. And so that's Deceased War of the Undead Gods issue number three, everybody, and once again, Tom Taylor does not disappoint. I think what I like the most about this deceased series is how it can really touch every corner of the DC universe and you never know who's going to be the POV for which issue. One second you're in space with Lobo and the Thanagarians, the next you're on Earth with the Amazons and Green Arrow. It really is a series where anything can happen and the universe feels massive and huge like it should. This issue also answers the question that I myself had had for a while when this book started and that is, okay, if the heroes already found a cure for the anti-life plague, what 
what's stopping them from just giving it to other planets? How do you up the ante in this zombie story? And, well, the answer seems to be that the title War of the Undead Gods isn't just talking about the new gods or the Olympian gods. Apparently it's talking about gods even older than all of them. It also helps, too, that the anti-life equation, as we know, was always one of those really vague Kirby-esque concepts that's open enough for interpretation for writers to pretty much add in whatever they want and have it not really feel like sacrilege. Overall, I thought this was another very strong issue. Definitely enjoying what we're doing here, and I can't wait to see what happens next. Overall, I would give it another very positive 8 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.